everything in the 19th century was disgusting, especially in England, with the country having a particularly hard time with people peeing everywhere. Every dark corner was covered in the stain and stench of the urine of men, even in the corners of church walls, which adds an even more blasphemous disgust to it. It wasn't until 1851 when the first public waiting rooms started opening, but the majority of these were designed for men only. I'm sure this was a great feat for mankind, but what about womankind? How did the women of the Victorian era cope with such restrictions, and how were they able to relieve themselves when nature called whilst out in public? Well, in today's video, we will be looking at the art of peeing yourself in public as a woman in the Victorian era, exploring the weird and wonderful solutions women of the time came up with to combat what was often referred to as the urinary leash. Hello guys and welcome. If you would like to hear more historical gossip, then just click on that subscribe button. Now, let's start today's video. Viewer discretion is advised. This is an educational documentary. During the Victorian era, public conveniences for women were virtually non-existent. Of course, this affected women's ability to leave the home, as women who wished to travel had to plan their route to include areas where they could relieve themselves. Thus, women never travelled much further than where family and friends resided. This is often called the urinary leash, as women could only go so far as their bladders would allow them. The prevailing attitudes towards femininity and modesty meant that women were expected to uphold an impeccable image at all times, even in the most private of matters. The elaborate layers of clothing worn by Victorian women only compounded the issue. With corsets, petticoats and voluminous skirts, accessing a chamber pot or even squatting discreetly in public was nearly impossible. But women of the era were not to be deterred. They devised clever strategies to navigate these challenges, often relying on discreet accessories and strategic planning. One such solution was the travelling toilet, also known as portable or collapsible toilets. Victorian women would often carry these portable toilets as part of their luggage or equipage and were essential for discreetly addressing nature's calls during extended trips. Whether navigating rural roads by carriage, enduring cramped train compartments, or sailing on ocean voyages, Victorian women relied on portable toilets for dignified relief. Additionally, they were handy for outdoor activities like picnics or hunting. Another common practice was the use of discreetly designed undergarments, such as split crotch drawers or specialised urination devices, allowing women to discreetly relieve themselves without the need to expose themselves in public. Victorian women, wearing split crotch undergarments, utilised secluded areas or designated spots in public to relieve themselves without fully disrobing, maintaining their privacy and dignity, while these undergarments provided a convenient way to urinate without removing multiple layers of clothing, the act itself likely involved standing or squatting in a stationary position rather than walking, aligning with the era's emphasis on modesty and cleanliness. Additionally, some women carried small fabric or leather pouches known as pea pockets, which were often adorned with lace or embroidery, discreetly hidden within their clothing. These pea pockets could be filled with absorbent materials like cotton or sponge to soak up urine, allowing women to relieve themselves without leaving a visible stain. There was also the technique of leg raising. When seated, women would often discreetly raise one leg, allowing urine to trickle down into a hidden receptacle or absorbent material concealed beneath their skirts. This technique required careful coordination and balance, but offered a relatively inconspicuous way to relieve oneself in public. To mask the smell of urine, Victorian women sometimes used perfumed handkerchiefs or sachets, allowing women to discreetly relieve themselves without drawing attention to the act. These scents, often derived from floral or herbal extracts, helped maintain an illusion of femininity and refinement. While rare, some urban areas had dedicated public lavatories for women, albeit fewer in number compared to those for men. These facilities provided a modicum of privacy and convenience for Victorian women navigating the challenges of public urination. 
Whatever the situation, many Victorian women meticulously planned their outings to ensure access to private facilities or secluded spots where they could relieve themselves discreetly, which often involved strategic timing of outings, selecting routes with known restroom facilities, or seeking out secluded dark corners in parks or alleyways. So perhaps 19th century England wasn't only covered in the stain and stench of the urine of men. It seems women were just much better at hiding it whilst doing so in a much more dignified manner. But despite the challenges they faced, Victorian women always found ways to assert their autonomy and independence, even in the most intimate aspects of everyday life. The art of peeing oneself may seem trivial to modern eyes, but in the context of Victorian society, it was a testament to the resilience and ingenuity of women in the face of major societal constraints. Thank you for watching. Until next time, keep exploring, and remember, history is always more interesting than it seems.